Ahoy hoy, I'm Planner Walk, and today we are on to pseudoscientist number nine, Bruce Maguire, who I don't really know much about. But I do know that he has made a video on evolution, so we're going to take a look at that. Absolutely riveting, a blank screen, we love that. That is the first 30 seconds of the video, by the way. Welcome to Mind Shock. This is your host, Bruce McGuire, and we are finally tackling the subject of the theory of evolution. One of the staples, one of the pillars, one of the foundations of the scientism cult. You gotta love how people who are against evolution always tend to try and paint science as some kind of cult or religion. This is often done to try and make it look like there's no evidence for evolution, that people who believe evolution are just parroting ideas they have been told. In reality, there has been a lot of evidence collected over the years for evolution, like genome mapping, the fossil record is a big one. These things have been peer-reviewed over and over again. If you want to say that it's all wrong, well then you've got a huge task ahead of you. If you're claiming that there was nothing, and then all the laws of thermodynamics are violated, and there's magically something, and then that magic something turns into a rock, and then the ro and then living organism, that rock turns into living organisms somehow, which turn into actually humans with conscious thought? I mean, think about the level of goofery. So much like Kent Hovind and a lot of other people who attack evolution, he's included a lot of things there that aren't evolution. Evolution is simply species changing over time. That is all that it is. It's not abiogenesis, it's not the Big Bang, it's not planet formation, just species changing over time. Okay, there was nothing. Then all the laws of thermodynamics are violated. Then there are magic rocks, and then on these rocks, the fish just just start spontaneously generating from the rocks. So firstly, science doesn't say that the universe started off as nothing. It says that it started off as a singularity. And secondly, rocks did not produce fish. Fish evolved from single-celled organisms. The formation of life itself probably started from hydrothermal vents or something along those lines. And then the fish magically turn into all these other animals? I mean, think about the level of ghosts. <laughs> well, there's a lot of fossil evidence to show that we evolved from a common ancestor. And I mean, what's your alternative explanation, huh? If it's an actual scientific theory, then we need actual scientific evidence aligning with the scientific method. Now, can that be provided? Well, what is it that you want? Do you want evidence from the fossil record that shows that humans had a common ancestor with chimpanzees? Or do you want genetic evidence which shows that humans have ERV insertions in the exact same place in the genome as other primates? There is a long list of evidence that can be gone through. Well, it's kind of funny because a lot of groups get triggered. They're like, no, you're misrepresenting this. They didn't just magically come from rocks. It took billions of years. So they're saying, like, if you just sit and look at a rock, in billions of years it's going to turn into a fish? No, what's being said is that if you have a population of organisms, and then you check back on them in a billion years, you'll have organisms that look completely different to what you started with. I mean, really? Like, what's so magical about the billions of years? How did the billions of years justify all of the violations of all the known laws of physics? So firstly, I'm not sure which laws of physics are being violated here. Evolution fits well within the laws of physics. But secondly, billions of years gives time for stuff to happen. It's like if I put a cake mix into the oven. It's going to take time for that cake to bake. Sure, not billions of years, but it still takes time. It's not like I can bake a cake within one second. That's not how that works. Like, so many groups get triggered. Yes, I am summarizing. I'm summarizing that, that rocks just magically sprung into existence and then fish somehow came from those rocks and turned into humans. Well, when your summary is essentially a straw man, that's a bad summary. If you want a good summary, it should be a summary that accurately represents the position that you're talking about. I mean, if your computer blew a switch and it's not turning on, if you sit, sit there and hit the power button for a billion years, it's not going to magically start working. You know, I actually have a computer that's a little bit faulty. If I use it for too long, the screen starts to go haywire, and that makes it really annoying to use. If I try to restart it, then it's going to have screen issues. The solution is to turn it off 
and leave it. If I just leave it for a couple of months, then I can use it for like a week or two before it starts having screen issues again. So yeah, just giving that computer time does fix it. Now if you're wondering why I still use that computer, it's because it's like a laptop mixed with a tablet so I can take it with me. In the burden of proof is on positive claims. The burden of proof is not on anybody to disprove uh, rocks magically ma manifest in space and then fish magically come out of the rock and magically turn into humans. The burden of proof is on those making the positive claim that that happened. You know, I'm pretty sure that changes when there's actually evidence for something. You need to go ahead and look at the evidence, and if you disagree with that evidence, then you need to pick it apart yourself. Essentially, your ignorance doesn't mean that you're correct by default. Is a certain percentage of Christians that go after the theory of evolution, but there are also Hindus and uh, plenty of uh, plenty of other religions that do as well, as well as atheists. There's plenty of atheists. I mean, I'm not a Christian. There's plenty of uh, atheists who do not believe in evolution because they understand the scientific method. So from what I've seen, it does tend to be Christians that go after evolution. And the reason seems to be that they believe that it conflicts with their religion. Of course there are also Christians that believe things like Genesis was not meant to be taken literally, so they have no problem with evolution. Now of course there will be some atheists that disagree with evolution, but there will also be some atheists that are flat earthers. It doesn't really count for much. But it is interesting that Bruce here is not a Christian, especially when his talking points sound a lot like what Kent Hovind says. So obviously adaptation is scientific. You can observe, even in a single lifetime, Certain species making adaptations. What is an adaptation? Okay, so here's a question. What if a bunch of adaptations occur over a very long time period, let's say 100 million years? Would you not call that evolution? Adaptation in biology, the process by which a species becomes fitted to its environment. So, a particular species. Not magically sprouting into dozens and millions of unrelated species, but a, a single species fitted to its own environment. You know that there are several environments that exist, right? And many of those environments are vastly different. And also, when a species adapts to an environment, often a lot of other things in that environment have to adapt as well. Thus, you end up with a continual cycle of things needing to adapt to survive. So, what do you think that would look like over, I don't know, a hundred million years. So a lot of scientists and cultists goofs, they think people pointing out issues with evolution are somehow disputing adaptation. And then they just spiral into these, uh, into these Dunning-Kruger tantrums. My question specifically is what stops that definition of adaptation that you use there from leading to evolution over a long enough time frame? Because evolution is essentially what was described there just happening time and time and time again. All right, so let's let's go to natural selection now. Again, something that is scientifically backed. So do you mean another thing that facilitates evolution that you agree with? Something that is observable you don't have to take it on faith like rocks magically sprouting in infinite space and then fish somehow magically coming from the rock and magically turning into humans you know if you actually looked into what people say about evolution you'd see that it's not quite as crazy as you're making it out to be natural selection process that results in adaptation of an organism to its environment by means of selectively reproducing changes in its genotype or genetic constitution, a brief treatment of natural selection follows for full treatment see evolution. The concept of natural selection and natural selection, those variations in the genotype, the entire complex of genes inherited from both parents, that increase an organism's chances of survival and procreation are preserved and multiplied from generation to generation at the expense of less advantageous variations, evolution often occurs as a consequence of this process. So, without getting into that last sentence, <laughs> which invokes magic... Yeah, let's just cite something to make our points and then ignore the parts that we disagree with. Let's agree with the fact that natural selection happens, but ignore the fact that natural selection can often result in evolution. That is why it's important to actually understand the thing that you are criticizing before you criticize it, because otherwise you make huge errors like that. Same single species, not magically turning into a different species. The same species 
if it migrates or switches environments or whatever, the uh, camouflage might need to adjust slightly. And then that's what this entire process of uh, natural selection and adaptation is. But what if a portion of that species moves to a different area and then adapts? And then a portion of that population moves to a different area and then adapts? And then a portion of that population moves to another area and then adapts again. At which point do so many adaptations accumulate that we can say, yeah, this is definitely a different species. Now, notice how adaptation and natural selection aren't theories. They're processes. Well, all of those are most certainly theories because they describe how something happens and all of them have evidence backing them up. You do have to remember that scientific theories are backed by evidence. Otherwise, it's just a hypothesis. So Britannica, again, evolution theory and biology postulating that the various types of plants, animals, and other living things on Earth have their origin in other pre-existing types and that the distinguishable differences are due to modifications in successful generations. So do you notice how adaptation, as you described it earlier, could lead to evolution? And do you also notice how it mentions nothing of the Big Bang, nothing of abiogenesis, it says nothing about fish coming from rocks? For some reason I feel like he hasn't noticed that. So, yeah, what does... So, and again, the, the evolution is dependent on a rock magically sprouting an in infinite space and then from that rock from that inorganic matter somehow organisms living beings somehow came from a rock no all you need for evolution is some form of life that can reproduce that is it. How that life came to be doesn't matter, that's not part of evolution. If you disagree with that, then I suggest paying attention to what you actually just read there. Now, we're going to go over pretty much the only video I think is necessary in addressing evolution here. Evolution versus God has to be one of the most hated videos on YouTube. Oh dear, it's Ray Comfort. I've seen enough of Ray Comfort's content to know that he doesn't understand evolution. So it's no wonder that Brian doesn't understand evolution. He's been listening to someone else who doesn't understand evolution. When it was initially released, high-profile atheist Jacqueline Glenn blew her top. I make fun of people like you, okay? I take idiotic extremists like you and make them look like a fool. Now, does she actually refute any points, though? Or does she just go on this ad hom spiral in her trigger dunning Kruger goofer. You are so entire that calling you stupid isn't good enough. Not a single refutation of the actual points, just ad hom spirals. You do realize that Ray Comfort isn't going to include everything that she says in his video, right? Like, if you want to see what points she makes, then go watch her actual video rather than watching a section of it in a Ray Comfort video. Ray Comfort isn't playing that clip to show what points she made, he's playing that clip to show that she got triggered or whatever. So just because Ray isn't showing you the points that she made, it does not mean that she did not make any points. Like if we're using your logic here, then clearly you haven't made any more points in your video because I'm ending my video here. It doesn't matter that there's over an hour left in your video, I didn't include it so therefore you must not have made any more points. And also the rest of the video just seems to be him going over Ray Comfort video and this video is more about Bruce rather than Ray Comfort. So leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know who you think the next pseudoscientists are gonna be. As always a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Tony C, Rashina Keller, Ray, Kid Vicious, definitely not NASA, Mori, Kaylee and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.